this morning. Before we start the official portion of our ceremony today, I ask that our guests please silence all electronic devices for the duration of the ceremony. Personal photography is welcome, but please be courteous to those around you. Military members will follow my lead for honors and remain covered for the entirety of the event. During the national anthem, persons not in uniform should stand facing the flag, which is located to the sector. With their hand over their heart, all veterans are authorized to render the hand salute. Finally, medical personnel are standing by to assist guests should the need arise. Please get the attention of an usher who will ensure you receive assistance. The change of career military tradition, which formally restates the continuity and authority of command. It is a formal custom conducted before the assembled crew and confirms to the men and women of the unit that the authority of command is maintained. The ceremony is a transfer of total responsibility, authority, and accountability from one individual to another. Today, Captain Greg Talava will relinquish his position as commanding officer to Captain Mary Ellen Durley. Presiding over today's change of command is Vice Admiral Linda Fagan, Commander Pacific Area, and Commander Coast Guard Defense Forces West. Joining us today for the ceremony are Captain Talapa's wife, Carrie, his daughters, Julia and Kate, his mother and father, Pam and Len, and his mother-in-law and father-in-law, Candace and Tim. Also joining us today are Captain Durley's mother, Mary, her sisters, Kayleen, Kathleen, and Lori, and her brother, Dan. We also have several distinguished guests present today, including Laurel Garrett, Plank Owner Commanding Officer, Coast Guard Cutter Healy. The Honorable Fran Ulmer, former Lieutenant Governor, State of Alaska, and current Chair of the Arctic Research Commission. Dr. Lawson Brigham, Governor, American Polar Society, and 17 current and prior Red Hall Commanding Officers. Already on the reviewing stand is Chaplain John Swanson, U.S. Navy Chaplain Corps, and Pacific Area Chaplain. Our music today is provided by the Navy Band's Northwest Brass Quintet. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem and the reading of the invocation. Now, Captain, United States Coast Guard, arriving. Healy, arriving. Now, Commander Pacific Area and Commander Coast Guard Defense Forces West, arriving. And salute. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem and salute.
In the Old Testament book of Job, we read, From whose womb comes the ice? Who gives birth to the frost from the heavens? When the waters become hard as stone, when the surface of the deep is frozen. Let us pray. You, O God, are Lord of all creation, and we offer thanks for your unfailing presence which sustains and guides us as we sail through life's perilous seas. You made us stewards of freedom, and we thank you for raising up for us extraordinary leaders of character who are able to steer a steady course and defend our most precious legacy, liberty and justice for all. During this time-honored ceremony, we acknowledge and offer thanks for the gift of leadership, for it is leadership that inspires and gives direction to our greatest asset, the men and women who proudly wear our nation's cloth and selflessly serve our nation each and every day. As Cap Captain Greg Talapa completes an extraordinary tour as Healy's commanding officer and now relinquishes command, we pray that you would continue to pour out upon him your blessing. His leadership, vision, and care for the men and women of Healy have been instrumental in supporting the advancement of science and defending our homeland, preserving our natural resources, and making our Coast Guard the very best in our nation's history. Bless him, Carrie, and their children, Julia and Kate, as they begin the next chapter of their lives together. From your never-ending storehouse of grace, strengthen and sustain them for the journey ahead. Grant them safe travel, new friendships, and true joy. Guard and defend them from every danger and grant them your peace. As Captain Mary Ellen Durley assumes command and leads the men and women of Healy into the next chapter of her storied history, we pray in the words of the prophet Isaiah that you would pour out upon her the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Bless her leadership and tenure as commanding officer and grant her a full measure of your wisdom and grace. Strengthen, comfort, and uplift her, especially during those lonely and difficult times when leadership requires making the most difficult decisions. Now bless this important ceremony, O Lord, and make us ever mindful of the words from the book of Psalms, not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Swanson. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is a traditional part of the change of command ceremony for the commanding officer and the prospective commanding officer to conduct a personnel inspection. This is an opportunity for the prospective commanding officer to review the personnel of her new command. Captain Durley will now accompany Captain Talapo on a personnel inspection.
to introduce the presiding official for today's change of command, Vice Admiral Linda Fagan, Commander Pacific Area and Commander Defense Forces West. Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us on uh, on what I know is a beautiful day in Seattle. Having been stationed here for uh, uh, several times, like as long as there's not rain coming out of the sky, it is a beautiful day in, uh, in Seattle. Uh, and welcome to uh, Rear Admiral Garrett, Captain Dean, and a number of other uh, distinguished guests that uh, we have uh, here with us today. Um, and you know, we mentioned we've got 17 uh, either current or former uh, icebreaker COs with us. In fact, I was looking at the RSVP this last night as I was preparing uh, for my remarks and you know just looked at the long uh, line and history of uh, you know, just ice breaking experience that we have represented here in the room and uh, you know I know we will we will rely on that as we uh, as we field these new polar security cutters as many of you know we've uh, announced the award to uh, to VT Halter and uh, just this week the Commandant announced the commitment to uh, for those uh, those polar security cutters here in Seattle, and it's just that the future is bright for the Red Hawk Hotel. <laughs> and uh, but this is where the staff gets anxious, because before I get into my prepared remarks, I do have something that I want to uh, want to share with you. So, uh, Captain Wade Moncrief is here. He was uh, he was the CEO of the Polar Star from 1985 to 1987, when a much younger version of me, reported as a brand new deck watch officer, fresh, uh, fresh out of the academy. And uh, part of the reason why I want to call out Wade is, uh, you know, for one, for his leadership and the in the culture that, that was on the Polar Star and how foundational that was to who I ultimately uh, sort of grew into as an officer and a leader. And we're going to talk a little bit about Greg's leadership, and I'm going to ch challenge uh, Marianne as she takes over command of this ship. But, uh, but in reflecting on you know a 34 year career now what is so essential in commanding officers are the ones that do this is they lay that cornerstone for brand new officers for an officer fresh out of the academy and if it weren't for Wade and that cornerstone that they all play 34 years ago i'm not sure where it ended up so thank you very much Dan. So uh, to our many partners that are here with us today, the Navy League members, Navy Band, thank you, uh, thank you for your support. Uh, and a special welcome to the Tilapa family and the Durley family. This is like a wedding ring. You put them on opposite sides, and the bride and groom side. And the family members, the Healy crew, thank you. Uh, you know, the, the crew, uh, well, we ask uh, a lot of this crew as we sail the ship but to the Arctic and for long periods of time. Uh, it's the families that are home uh, continuing to keep the home fires burning and, and just provide all that support and continuity so that the men and women of the Healy can go out and do the business the Coast Guard asks of them and then can come back to, uh, to you know, a, a seamless uh, family situation. And thank you for your service and support of what our Coast Guard members do. So the crew of the Healy, thank you for your hard work for preparing for this day. I have had the uh, experience this summer of doing a uh, command uh, underway at sea. Uh, we did that on the Stratton off of San Diego about a month and a half ago. There's something to be said for underway finance because there's like no tent, there's no guest list, there's no parking plan, there's no ushers. You just get out there on the flight that I can get and you get it done. So I know a lot of hard work goes into this and, and thank you. And I can tell you, I couldn't see it. I, you know, I walked down to the waterfront last night. You can see the cutter uh, over here in the yard. The cutter, cutter looks great and I know uh, we're looking forward to getting her back over here and getting, getting you guys underway uh, this summer. So during the ceremony, we're going to accomplish three things. We're going to celebrate the accomplishments of the men and women who are the heart and soul of Healy. We will witness the continuity of command that passes from one commanding officer to another. And we're re going to reaffirm our commitment to our core values as an organization, to honor, respect, and devotion to duty, the very cornerstones of who we are as a service. Healy has a rich history of service to our Coast Guard and our nation, and we are fortunate to have Healy in our fleet. That Healy was just a design concept when I was a young officer on Polar Star. To see her now contributing to the fleet is just, just great. But it's just a piece of metal without the crew. And in the, in the words of John Paul Jones, it's the people that matter when you measure the rating of the ship. It's the courage, professionalism, and devotion to duty demonstrated by the men and women standing the watch, providing maintenance and logistics, supporting our partners in scientific research, and protecting them from polar bears. This is what makes Healy so successful. The crew before us today are proficient military operators dedicated to their mission and craft. 
they provide the safety and security our nation demands. And during the past two years that we kept the office of leadership, where we were in safe, where we were all in safe comfort of our own homes, the men and women of Healy were adding to this rich legacy of Coast Guard history. Modeling the vision of the new Polar Security Cutter, the crew of the Healy engaged in a multi-year effort to develop an organic law enforcement capability. They conducted Coast Guard Cutter Healy's first ever law enforcement work, partnering with NOAA to complete a remote cannery facility assessment in Alatak Bay, Alaska, and a living marine resources and safety compliance boarding of a commercial fishing vessel. And I hear that the crew just passed another clear inspection and remain ready to conduct law enforcement operations. Congratulations, it's just a great, great example of the, of the proficiency and responsiveness and resiliency of, the, of this crew. During the past two years, Healy also reestablished cold weather dive operations in the Arctic, worked with an embarked Coast Guard Navy dive blocker and the crew, and they executed 19 ice dives. Healy continued to advance our strong partnerships with federal and academic entities to conduct scientific research. And the crew completed nearly 1,500 discrete science evolutions in, in, in very severe uh, high-risk ice stations. This crew was so proficient in maneuvering between stations that the embarked science teams couldn't process the data fast enough as it, as it was being produced faster than they could analyze it. Camp Tlapa, command at sea is perhaps the most demanding and lonely job in the world, and the weight of responsibility can only be held by officers who have proven themselves as professional mariners and leaders. A command afloat tour requires determination and patience, and watching a crew thrive and succeed is incredible, and I know that's what your crew did. Command at Sea connects us to the very origins of, of our service. Recall the world's words of Alexander Hamilton, a few armed vessels judiciously stationed at the entrances of our ports might at small expense be made useful sentinels of the law. But he also espoused that anchoring our vessels within the harbor would defeat the purpose of the service. And he knew that to be effective in enforcing our nation's laws and protecting sovereignty, we needed to push our land borders out. And Greg, that's what you and the Healy crew have done. You've lived up to those expectations and continue to have proud line of service and thank you for that. 117 days above the Arctic Circle, we truly extended our borders to far-reaching parts of the globe. We didn't let the remote location or this location disconnect the ship from the rest of the world. An impressive social media campaign nearly reached over 2 million viewers. The images and stories have been shared all over Facebook, Instagram, and the, the Department of Defense uh, uh, site for, for videos. You've helped publicize how critical this mission is and help our, our nation uh, understand what it is when we sail one of these red gold icebreakers uh, into the high latitude. The new operational doctrine you implemented for conducting ice stations has revolutionized scientific collection. And by introducing a station keeping approach to this, we're working similar to working aids and navigation, you have uh, ensured that you're able to, to work more efficiently in heavier seas and improve data collection and quality. Impressively completed 300% more science sorting than what was originally planned. Healy's been successful because of Camp Tilapa. You've provided vision and leadership that allowed the crew to flourish. Vision is everything for leaders. Vision provides direction, hope, purpose. Leaders communicate vision clearly, creatively, and continually. Vision is key for leaders. Everything rises and falls in leadership. You translate vision into reality, and leadership and vision are, are empty concepts if you don't also create and engender trust. And I know you've done that. People buy into leaders when they buy into their vision, and trust turns that into commitment and clarity and confidence. Your leadership is reflected in the performance of your team and the successes that you share with them. And your leadership wasn't just focused on the crew's operational readiness, it was on the crew and the well-being of the crew. Your crew is the context, focus, and priority, and everything that uh, is the heart and soul of the ship. So in a minute, I'm going to formally recognize Count Talapa, and then I'm going to predict, I haven't seen his speech, but here's how this is going to go. He's going to give all his credit to the crew. And I say, this isn't my accomplishment, this is the crew's accomplishment. And there's two reasons why this is true. This is what true selfless leaders do, uh, but, but it is true. This crew has absolutely thrived under Captain Lapa's leadership. They trusted him, they responded to his vision and leadership, and they rose to the very many challenges they were presented with over the past two years. So, the men and women of the Healy, and many of us here in this audience, you know, at some point, in some years' time, there will be another group assembled uh, under a tent like this one uh, as, we, as we decommissioned uh, Healy. There's not a decommissioning date. But at some point, right, all ships, uh, all, all ships uh, are decommissioned, and people will remember the long, proud legacy of the Healy and Healy's proud history, proud history that this crew has made over the last few years, and then the 
crew that uh, will support Captain Durley uh, will make more more history as we, we move forward. Thank you for your professionalism and selfless service to the nation. And uh, all of you sharing Captain Blanca's success and there's much, much to be, to be proud of. So before I call Captain Blanca up, can we just give the, the crew and the family of the Healy a round of applause? Service Medal, Gold Star in lieu of a third, to Greg Talapa, United States Coast Guard. Captain Talapa is cited for meritorious service in the performance of duty as Commanding Officer, Coast Guard Cutter Healy, Seattle, Washington, from June 2017 to June 2019. He demonstrated exceptional leadership of the nation's only medium polar security cutter, tasked with exercising United States sovereignty in the Arctic. He expertly executed seven major scientific research missions, covering 46,000 nautical miles, operating for 117 days above the Arctic Circle to promote domestic and international scientific cooperation to increase the global understanding of the environmental realities of the Arctic region. Employing a masterful knowledge of the Bering Sea, he oversaw the challenging deployment of an automated underwater vehicle that surmounted strong currents to confirm the location of the ill-fated fishing vessel destination. Furthermore, his deft leadership and ingenuity in the recovery of one of the crab pots aided the Marine Board of Investigation in confirming that a primary causal factor in the sinking was improper use of stability instructions, information used to prevent future casualties across the commercial fishing fleet. As one of the Coast Guard's leading experts on the Arctic, he briefed numerous dignitaries and government leaders in support of the Polar Security Acquisition Strategy and oversaw an extensive public affairs program highlighting the Coast Guard's role in expanding Arctic domain awareness and response. Captain Talapa's dedication and devotion to duty are most heartily commended and are in keeping with the highest traditions of the United States Coast Guard. The operational distinguishing device is authorized. to a Pacific area, uh, and today marks your continued service in what I think is the most challenging and rewarding jobs of the Coast Guard, and that's community work. So I had the opportunity to work with, uh, with Mary Ellen and Vicki my last assignment at headquarters, and I know that she's a passionate cutterman. Uh, she's an icebreaker sailor. It's in her DNA. She is dedicated to, uh, to, to this mission and being afloat. Frankly, I can't think of a better a leader and commanding officer to be assuming a command of, of the Healy today. Uh, the other thing that you should know is, you know, I asked for Mary Ellen by name. It's not by chance uh, the senior uh, 06 afloat assignments. Uh, I, I get a lot to say who, uh, who comes to command the ships here in that area. And when I when I found out that Mary Ellen was one of the options for Healy, I uh, just can't, again, could not have imagined a better, uh, better command officer to be coming in. Uh, she's demonstrated integrity and judgment. She leads by example. She's a cutterman who loves being at sea. And I know that she will inspire that same love that see in, uh, in the young uh, cuttermen that are, that are coming coming up and help uh, help lay that foundation moving forward. Her, she's earned a special trust and confidence in our service in our nation. And she's now being entrusted with the next generation, the manners and profession, the history, tradition, art, skill, and love and craft that it means to be a cutterman. You're going to face many challenges while you're in command, but your service and value to the nation is high. Train your crew to be proficient and ready when the challenges arise, and they will. Make this crew and their families a top priority, and they will return that in, in um, multiple times over. Focus on mission excellence, but most of all, treasure every minute. It will be far too fleeting, as I know Greg knows. He will blink in two years, will have gone by, and don't be sitting in the other seat that someone else will be on the stage. So don't forget to enjoy it. 
So, in, in closing, demand for Coast Guard services and our leadership globally, especially in the Pacific area, has never been higher. You, can see, you see some of the press releases today, some of, the, some of what our ships are doing uh, in the Western Pacific. That demand has never been higher, and I am nothing but optimistic about uh, the future of our Coast Guard and what and where we will contribute uh, to our nation's security, to maritime security, and we will continue uh, to serve uh, the American public and deliver that service in a way that, uh, that they expect of us. Again, I am incredibly confident in the future of the Coast Guard. It's in this crew, I see the many attributes that have made our Coast Guard always ready for over two centuries. So I salute those in the armed services in every branch who are serving around the world uh, 24-7, 365. In particular, I want to salute the men and women of the Coast Guard who are standing to watch right now around the globe. God bless the United States Coast Guard. God bless America. It's separate promise. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Admiral Fagan. It is with great pleasure that I introduce Captain Greg Talapa, Commanding Officer, United States Coast Guard Cutter Healy. You from Chief Bowen to smile. Thank you, Chief. <laughs> Not the first time I've got that. Okay, good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming. Wow, it's been a lightning fast tour. Uh, to to uh, echo the Admiral's remarks, uh, Cherish every day, Mary Ellen. I think that two years ago I was sitting there uh, at the start of this site. It was just incredible. It flies by. Uh, Admiral, thank you very much for the award. It's tremendously hum humbling to stand here and be the recipient of an award that is anchored in the collective efforts and the achievements of what we call Team Healy. Alongside some of the finest men and women in the Coast Guard, men and women that have volunteered to deploy literally to the corner of the earth, all while staying within the confines of 420 feet of ship that we affectionately call Red Steel. Often deprived of sunlight and darkness, depending on the time of year, uh, perennially being wet and cold, sometimes hot though, if senior chief stranger decides to turn the steam on to accommodate a belly aching non-crew member. <laughs> <laughs> Working long days that turn into weeks and then months without much of a di diversion, and I don't consider the standing debate on the ship about whether or not a hamburger is a sandwich to be a legitimate diversion. <laughs> That's a true story. I think we were just talking about it yesterday at lunch. Ridiculous. <laughs> but the added challenge of some rather sporty sea conditions that persist in the Gulf of Alaska, uh, Bering Sea in the Arctic, all while hosting the latest group of enthusiastic scientists to arrive on board for their first taste of the Arctic. There is no parity in this, uh, for this in the Coast Guard, none whatsoever, no parity for what we do, for where we go, for our tactical value to science, for our operational value to the Coast Guard, or for our strategic value to the nation. There is no parity whatsoever. No established operating procedures for much of what we do. For example, like when we take samples out of the seafloor at a mile deep, or deploying a several mile long mooring with ice moving aggressively all around the ship. Nothing about how to deploy dozens of people and thousands of pounds of gear on a moving ice flow. In fact, most of our line of work is handed down from shipmate to shipmate with old-fashioned on-the-job training informed by experience and best practices. This is an incredible thing, really, filled with risk and reward, but it engenders the question, why do it? Why go to sea? And for that matter, why go to sea in the Arctic, where there's no infrastructure, very limited communications, and on a ship of a class of one, where self-rescue is the reality, the only option if you get stuck or have a casualty. It is a curious question, in fact, one that the Office of Cutter Forces offered up in the form of an essay contest this year. And while I didn't submit an essay in response, and nor do I think any of my shipmates or uh, Healy sailors did do, it has been a topic of discussion on board that we have been debating for a while. And it does not appear to be that there's a consensus on that answer other than what it is not, which it is not uh, doing it for the money 
or doing it in order to strengthen and improve your home life. <laughs> but for me, the answer, quite frankly, is quite simple. Simple. It's the crew. Truly. Period. Long break. The men and women assembled right over there. The chiefs, the officers, the petty officers, all the way down to the non-rates. The bonds that form, the culture, the group struggle against long odds, the challenge of the mission, everyone rowing together, the feeling of accomplishment all harnessed together by the people on board, the crew. We are not all the same, not even close, but the Coast Guard attracts a certain sliver of the population, the ones that have character and grit, and backbone, honor and humility, people that are inherently curious and they're drawn to difficult problem sets. Shipboard culture is intoxicating, really. It's hard to explain, but those that have experienced it usually return for more, except by several things. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to misdiagnose as a grass is greener phenomenon, because once you leave it, you typically want to come back. But it isn't that. It's the spirit of adventure and common purpose that you're part of something greater than just yourself. And the ultimate honor and privilege in all of this is serving as the commanding officer. For the last two years, you've made coming to work a real pleasure, rewarding beyond belief. But beyond all of the operational accomplishments, like discovering new ocean currents, seafloor features, the detection of new marine mi uh, mammal migration paths, the return of cold weather dive operations, our significant role in some rather uh, large SAR cases, our incredible safety record of over 1,500 over-the-side science casts without mishap. Yes, these are all uh, items to herald, but beyond these are the personal development and accomplishments of all of you, the crew. Many of you are headed to command positions or sabbatical-type education programs, flight school, sought-after recruiter job, senior enlisted advisor at major commands, elite training programs like the EMITP, the Enlisted Marine Inspector Training Program, command cadre jobs and ant, ant teams, department heads that have float units and high profile uh, search and rescue stations. In the last year alone, 34% of you have either advanced or are currently above the cut for advancement or promotion. Six of those are Chief Petty Officers and Chief Warrant Officers. These are our accomplishments and are a reflection of just how high-performing the Healy culture and Healy climate is. And I could not be more proud of the success we've had together. To the crew that is the core member of Team Healy, I salute you and a heartfelt thank you from me. I've been blessed with two outstanding XOs, Commander Michelle Shallot now and Captain Select Keith Ropella before her. XO, thank you for your hard work. You've been my muscle and my filter, and you've kept us on a steady course. We've shared command as much as two people can. I value your counsel, your diplomacy, and your loyalty. You are a damn fine officer. I'm on sail with you at any time, XO. Still got it under control. <laughs> I've also had the luxury of first-rate command master chiefs. I inherited Scotty Hudson from my predecessor, and boy, was I lucky. I'm convinced there is no finer senior enlisted leader in the Coast Guard. You'll be losing a great one when you retire in a couple days, Master Chief. Through your actions, you did more to finesse the climate, develop leaders, and improve those around us than I thought possible. You are a selfless leader personified. Master Chief Hewlin and Master Chief Martinowski before you, I will always be in your debt. You served the crew and me well, and you have made Healy better. Thank you. There's another big part of Team Healy that often goes unrecognized. They're the ones that pick up and move every couple years with little influence on the process, say goodbye to loved ones for half the year, 
suffer through undelivered emails and dropped calls from Dutch Harbor, but are so crucial for keeping us secure for sea at home so that we are ready to answer all bells while deployed. They are the families, the wives, the husbands, the sons and daughters, the mothers and the fathers. Julie and Kate, you guys are unbelievable. I couldn't be more proud of you. Carrie, my loving wife and my soulmate, thanks for being my rock, keeping things for secure, secure for sea at home. Without you, I'd be rudderless. You make me better, and I love you. I'm lucky to have my mother and my father here today as well. Mom, Dad, thank you for preparing the person and not the path. I love you both. My success is underwritten by your hard work some 35 and 40 years ago, 45 years ago. Tim and Candy, the perfect in-laws, if ever there were. Thank you for your continued love and support and the occasional seamanship advice from an authentic sea captain. There are a number of other folks here today that I'd like to recognize as well as they play a big part of uh, Team Healy. Uh, the Navy League, I don't see Pete Stiles and Sam Chaku, but uh, in absentia, I appreciate what they've done for Healy. Uh, the Pat Gary and the district staffs, uh, Captain Dean, your team has been fantastic to, to be in the backyard in the shadow of. Uh, Bay Seattle and Captain Golba, you have a great team. We rely heavily on your support. The Ned, work life, admin, the clinic, we couldn't do it without you. Thank you. The port engineers and the product line, uh, folks like Lieutenant Commander Amy Lockwood, John Brummett, Master Chief Serfaz, Master Chief Tooley, and Chief Warner deserve special recognition uh, for the water they carry and keeping Healy's readiness at a remarkable level. Wow, thank you. Our ombudsman, uh, Ms. Lauren Hamilton, and the long line of Healy sailors with us today, like Admiral Garrett, and Bev Havlin, and Jason Hamilton, and John Reeves, and Dan Everett, all who have stayed connected with the Healy and me personally and provided me invaluable counsel along the way. Thank you. Captain Gurley, welcome to Team Healy. It's been a fabulous, fabulous week with you. Thank you for your flexibility and patience as we fight through the final stretches with our long maintenance availability over at Vigor. You're inheriting one heck of a ship and a tremendous crew. And I have every confidence 2019 will be a better deployment year for Team Healy. That's it for me, fair winds and open leads. Be bold, be confident, and be Team Healy. I will now read my orders. Ship's company, attention. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated. From Coast Guard Personnel Command to Captain Greg Talapa, subject to assignment. Upon relief, detach as commanding officer, Coast Guard Cutter Healy, and report for duty to the 9th District Chief of Operations. Captain Durley will now read her orders. Personnel Command to Captain Mary Ellen J. Durley. Subject, assignment, new orders. Depart, Coast Guard Headquarters, Office of Navigation Systems, and report to Coast Guard Cutter Keeley.
Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Mary Ellen Durley, Commanding Officer, United States Coast Guard Cutter Healy. Admiral Fagan, distinguished guests, polar ice breaking commanding officers, Captain Tlapa and the Tlapa family, my dear Coast Guard family and friends who are in the audience, especially in my family. Uh, my mother, Mary, Kayleen, Lori, Kathleen in the back of the camera, um, and my brother, Dan. Uh, all who have come and, uh, from America's Dairyland and Illinois, Virginia, you name it, to be here today. Especially Professor uh, Michael Doc McCoy, my uh, Coast Guard Academy sponsored dad, um, traveling all the way from Connecticut. Uh, thank you for presiding and attending uh, this morning this momentous occasion. My deep and heartfelt thanks to Captain Talapa, Commander Shell and that entire Team Healy crew standing over there for their tremendous time and preparations dedicated to make my relief week a smooth process. They have welcomed me with open arms and made me exception, an exceptional first impression this week. I know I am not the only one who is eager to complete our maintenance period and get Healy underway. It is an absolute honor and distinct pleasure to command Coast Guard Cutter Healy. I started my Coast Guard afloat career in 1995 as a newly commissioned ensign, sailing the waters of the Great Lakes. Today I'm elated to return back to the Great Pacific Northwest, where the crew and I will journey north in support of our national strategic missions in the Arctic, demonstrating the absolute best of America's ready, relevant, and responsive United States Coast Guard. I'm eager to work with the outstanding Team Healy and the rest of our federal, state, and local uh, community members to protect and defend our nation. I will literally, however, be filling big shoes left by Captain Talapa. <laughs> and, and this is the second time in my career that I've had the opportunity in following Greg's footsteps. I admit some of the very first conning officer skills I learned were under his direct instruction on Coast Guard Cutter Acacia. In fact, Greg often shared vital deck watch officer uh, lessons learned with me, his quote unquote young grasshopper, <laughs> and sometimes singing in the wardroom a little Gordon Lightfoot's uh, and Greg's special rendition of the Edmund Fitzgerald ballad. Um, I do not, however, for the crew, anticipate sharing Greg's vocal talents with you, um, but I will use all of my knowledge and past experience to build upon Healy's successful accomplishments we heard this morning uh, through new opportunities and challenges over the next two years. This ceremony today recognizes Team Healy, who has proudly demonstrated outstanding performance under Captain Tlaco's leadership. I am honored to lead such a talented group of Coast Guard maritime and scientific professionals. Together we will enhance the U.S. Arctic research capability, save lives, enforce maritime laws and treaties, and preserve and protect our precious maritime environment for all enemies, foreign and domestic. EXO, all policies and standing orders remain in effect. Take charge and dismiss the crew. Ship's company, attention. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the delivery of the benediction and remain standing for the playing of Semper Paratus and the departure of the official party. Let us pray. Almighty God, we are humbled by the responsibilities that have been entrusted to us as stewards of freedom and for the daily opportunities to protect and preserve our great nation. The courageous sacrifices of countless men and women throughout our history have made freedom our most precious legacy. We unite our hearts in a singular desire to not only serve, but to serve with honor. Instill within us a joyful spirit as we live out our vocation as defenders of liberty and all that we do.
do, keep our thoughts and actions pure. Grant us the integrity and moral courage to always speak the truth and take action wherever there is injustice, suffering, or wrongdoing. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Forces West, departing, and salute. Now, Captain, United States Coast Guard, departing. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremonies. On behalf of the men and women of Healy, thank you for sharing in today's ceremony. You are invited to a reception which will be held in the gymnasium. Although there will be no formal receiving line, the official party looks forward to meeting all guests at the reception. Ship's company, dismissed.